next speaker you know okay thank you thank you can anybody yeah he is a person who made my last npc all the sessions are desert nobody was in the session the moment i came inside all are here he is the person going to have session nine the sultan is smile ji please come onto the side right sir yeah thank you sir yeah. thank you very much sir he will be there only with you not on the dash yeah i i am basically a teacher i like to take you people through a journey a journey of environment a complete journey of environment and i have requested the mc to forget that board because she has forgotten the board herself i just want to take you around through this journey soil health is human health soil health is human health now if i want to know about soil health is human health this is the only request i make don't come in between there because this was i wanted to say something about climate change i will not talk much in detail i'm going to show you a lot of slides we can discuss at any point of time so i just wish to share all the information with you people whatever i have over there take it to you but one basic thing i would like to share is many people get confused between uh, re that is rehabilitation and restoration everybody talks about restoration i am going to restore my soil i am going to restore my fields i am going to restore the land supposing a man meets with an accident and the leg is amputated supposing this person meets with an accident and the leg is amputated if i can give him his own leg again it is a restoration but if i give him an wooden leg it is rehabilitation and what we are doing for our environment is rehabilitation and not restoration let us be very clear about it once we damage we cannot again the restore the environment it takes several 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 years to restore and one, one thing we can do is mitigate how best can we mitigate and for this this mitigation is very important how best we can take up first how best we can carry it further and i'm thankful to narsana and the entire team when we met here for the npc and we started this summer culture when we started looking at these concepts and uh, when i started feeling the amount of uh, commitment which this group has i have already given the entire presentation a pdf file for them only request i made to them was to upload after my lecture so it will be available for you right fine three important things in life air soil water please understand uh, dear ladies and gentlemen that we always classify things into living and non living we always do it right from school we teach children the difference between living and non living very good air air is non living we teach them we teach them that we are living right air is non living we are living remove the non living air from our body what do we become non living nobody tells us water is non living we are living remove the non living water from my body i am non living a wonderful relationship between environment and us i do not know why why do we need air to breathe your good name ma'am your good name blog can i use your name blog says that she uses air for breathing you all agree yeah what did you have for breakfast sir what food did you have rice 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 fine so whatever you ate now in the morning did you have more amount of protein or more amount of carbohydrate or more amount of fat carbohydrate so blocks logically had carbohydrate for breakfast carbohydrate is made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen so what did blocks have for breakfast carbon hydrogen oxygen Where do you normally find carbon, hydrogen, oxygen? So, what is blocks have for breakfast? We all had air for breakfast. We all are going to have the same air for our lunch. Only thing is, we don't understand. Plants make use of this air and convert it into end product. Some plants we eat and we call them as food. So, these three basic components, along with fire and ether, in India is respected as the panchabhuta. is india is respected as the panchabhuta among this component two very important things for any type of an ecosystem including permaculture energy flows nutrient cycle please remember energy flows nutrient cycle in this concept we understand who eats more an elephant will eat more or a dog will eat more an elephant will eat more very good 
Now, this is the basic idea we carry with ourselves that an elephant eats more. If an elephant eats more, supposing we find that the weight of an elephant is about 5,000 kg, for example, and the weight of a dog is about 20 kg, a normal dog, right? Supposing I'm going to feed the elephant, I give 550 kgs of food. If I feed the dog, I give about 1 kg of meat. Any food or medicine today uh, is based on don't record me, record this voice. My voice will reach you. Right? Now, for any medicine or anything, we, we recommend in terms of body weight. Food or medicine is in terms of body weight. So, a 5000 kg elephant is eating 50 kg of grass. So, 1 kg body weight of elephant eats, 1 into 50 divided by 5000, that is 1 by 100, that is 0 0.01 grams, which is about 10 milligrams. How much does a dog eat? Dog eats, and that is 15 milligrams. So who is eating more? <laughs> dog is eating more. Why is dog eating more? Because it is a carnivore. And carnivores get less energy per unit of non-vegetarian food compared to a vegetarian meat. So any developing country in a permaculture model should have more weightage on a vegetarian intake related to a non-vegetarian intake. Related to, right? This is the magic word in the world. This is the magic word today in the world. Echo. Echo means home. Home. Just a home. And if I study the home, it is called as ecology. And I evaluate the home, it is economy. Logi is study, normy is numbers. And in today's situation, there is a fight between the two. Who is superior? And in fact, something burns, and what burns is the ecology. Because everybody wants to concentrate on economy. Biodiversity is very important for us. In this biodiversity, India, we are very, very rich in biodiversity. We are very rich in biodiversity. We have excellent types of microorganisms in our soil. We have wonderful earthworms in our soil. We have lovely flowers, beautiful birds, magnificent animals, and what not. We have a variety of vegetables, and within the same vegetable, we have several varieties. That's the beauty of our country, and we had all this as our own when we were colonized. They started calling different names. They started giving names as cow pea, pigeon pea, chick pea, horse gram, and our next generation thinks that when the animals are supposed to eat them. So the main source of protein is being lost through this sort of misnomenclatures, and these are all belonging to us. All these animals, Variety of animals, and then this class started. Bos indicus is Indian species of cattle. Bos taurus is the imported species of right. Bos indicus has a wonderful hump and a lovely cheek. Bos taurus doesn't have both. So one is desi, one is pardesi, right. And in this class came up. How we used to select our own bulls, like what you find in the case of the bullfight in Spain, in local Tamil Nadu, we used to have a sort of a cattle game using bulls, which is called as Jali Kattu. In this, this huge bull, which is being tamed by a man, they, they are supposed to hold the horns of the bull and be with it for just one minute. They would not be able to. Very ferocious bulls, but at the same time, very timid bulls for the own people. That is the beauty of the castle we have over here, right? That's the beauty of the castle. Now this castle, that is our aim of development, whereas boss Taurus is how much a bull will weigh because the source is different. Wow. Yeah. Rest of time though, stand. Sabadian. Wait. Wait. And that is boss Vibalis. That is our boss. Right. The same thing happened with our chicken industry. This chicken industry, today we think this is the only chicken in the world. Only chicken in the world, when we had so many varieties of them. So many varieties of them. The only difference I find is, when I was a kid, I went to the market, in 70 days the chicken stand stood in attention. Today in 48 days it stands in standard. It is so heavy because of lots of hormones and lots of antibiotics which are included in the feed. Please be careful with all the big markets which are selling you. I don't want to name any brands. You know about them better. 
So today most of the species are being threatened. We are losing a lot of species. Permaculture restores them. So when you are doing permaculture, it is not just plants. That is a whole holistic approach which we will have to think about. And what has happened today in our education system, as was discussed by Varandana, is here is the mother. The child says conservation of resources. Mom says, son, this is the most important lesson. Do you know why? Because 50 marks are for that lesson. Not because for conservation. That is the attitude with which we are trying to teach our children as the next generation. And this has taken us to food security. And in food security, unfortunately, India, from the 97th position in 2016, our hunger index has gone to 100th position now. It is the right time you have met. And yesterday, that is what Mr. Gaza was going on pleading, let us do something for our food, for our children, for our security. And so, from today, please stop wasting food. I had to put this slide today because whenever I eat there, I find a lot of food being wasted. We have all met here to save food and we are wasting food at the dining hall. I think we got to change. We got to change. This is taking away one third of the cooked food in India. One third of the cooked food is wasted and on the other side we find it. So when you want to talk about permaculture, start with food security. I will not go into the details, just have an idea. Is there enough availability? Is there enough access? And is there enough utilization? Have we brought a balance between them? Have we thought about a balance between them? Start thinking. Please start thinking, right? Sustainable food systems, yes, I need environmental health. I need economic viability or vitality. I also need social equity. Now, all these three together give me food production, food distribution, and so to gives me food consumption. That is what is the model for permaculture. Permaculture is not just planting more trees or more plants, nothing. It has to give a complete food consumption, a sort of a balanced thing. So what is soil? You're not supposed to ask questions, is it? Give me something. It is food. So no soil, no food. No soil, no food, right? That's why suddenly International Year of Soil was declared in 2015. Is soil, according to textbook definition, because sir was very much particular about textbook definition, soil is a mineral matter. Am I right? Yes. I said so. But we can always rechange our views, no? That's what the politician does. What, what is the di difference between a living and a non-living? A, a living organism has a digestive system, a circulatory system, an excretory system, a respiratory system, a reproductive system, a nervous system. Does your soil have it? Soil has it. I don't know. Digestive system. A dog is found dead on the, on the soil. It's found dead over there. You walk over there. In two, three days, it starts thinking. Am I right? But if I make a pit, two feet by two feet by two feet, put the dog, bury it, do I get the smell? No. Why? Who? Who does it? Microorganisms. Microorganisms do it. Now, who does it in my stomach? So, I call my stomach as a digestive system. Why can't I call the soil has logically, yeah? Very fine. We take in oxygen, give out carbon dioxide. Soil also takes in oxygen, gives out carbon dioxide. When I get a sort of injury in my leg, I put a tablet in my mouth. How does the medicine reach my leg? Through a circulatory system, right? Do you pluck your plants every day and feed the root or you put the water on the top? So how does that go to the root? Soil has a circulatory system. Whenever there is a break, we rush up to one place, the restroom. Because we got to eliminate the salt from our body. Am I right? Saline soils bring the salt and throw them out. So soil has a excretory system. Whatever may be the reproductive system, any fertilizer also needs to be implanted. Even if it is a artificial insemination, it has to be implanted into the uterus of a mother. Only then it grows. Any plant, even if it is tissue culture, you have to place in the soil to establish a reproductive connection. Only then the plant grows. So soil has 
I used to talk about all these five, and I spoke about these five in the National Permaculture Conference. Suddenly, after going back, I thought, whether well, soil has a brain? Now, that was a good question, though. Does soil have a brain? Yes? No? Yes? Soil has a brain? I don't know. When you suddenly talk of, uh, was thinking about it, yes, I think it has a brain. You make a pit and put any, any, any biomass into it, it decomposes it. Am I right? Right? But if I put a seed in it, it does not decompose, it germinates it. So a soil can distinguish what it has to decompose, what it has to germinate. So a soil does have a brain, man. Better brain than what we have. Right? At least we lose our head, uh, hair. And we think about soil in one in this pattern. Please, what Vandana was trying to tell in the class is, just take up soil, put it in a bottle, take it up, and you know what is the quality of water you have, quality of soil you have. Very simple experiments you can continue, and these are all the soil organisms which help us in the process. A variety of soil organisms in which these two are very important, earthworms and termites, depending upon the soil ecosystem, depending upon the soil ecosystem, and the soil, good soil, organic matter, at least about 5%. Unfortunately, the national average today for India is 0.4%. These are the porospheres. Soil particles come close to each other, space in between is occupied by microorganisms. So that is porosphere. If that is porosphere, if you have a concrete wall and if you want to put a nail on it, will the nail go inside? No. So what am I supposed to do? How? With what, what machine do you use to make a hole? You drill it. You drill it. Same way earthworms drill through the soil and those spaces are called as drillospheres. These are occupied by organisms. So what happened in those days was when a plant grew and when it was harvested, the top portion of the plant went to the kitchen. The middle portion of the plant went to the animals and the bottom portion of the plant went to the soil. Am I supposed to continue or stop? I don't know. That's right. Because as a teacher, when the bell rings, I suddenly feel my class is over. Anyway, now, the, the top goes to the house, the middle goes to the animals, and the bottom goes to the soil. The entire thing was taken care of, and as Dr. Gopal was asking yesterday, the microbial population of the soil was completely being supported. Was being supported, right? But today, this is what we are doing. Today, this is what we are doing. And we think by, by, by burning, we can do something wonderful. Here is fish. I am a bit faster because I don't want her to come and raise the board. You must turn the other way around and sit today. Now, this fish, supposing you have this fish and you want to take it live home, but the fish dies. If you want to preserve, what would you do? There is no ice with you, there is no refrigerator with you. So, any fish. You have to add salt. Salt. What will happen if you add salt? What will happen to the microorganisms? They will die. So the fish will not decompose. Am I right? And we dump so much of salt in our soils that our soils are becoming dry fish. Nitrate is the salt of nitrogen, phosphate is the salt of phosphorus, and potassium is the salt of potassium. So the more salt I add, supposing you are going to have a meal and your meal in the afternoon is going to have more salt in it. What is the first thing you should ask for? That is what is happening to the soil. Soil is saying, give me more water. Because the soil is thirsty. So these are all interrelated in such a way that this thirst is required. Uh, now it became really a permaculture lecture, right? With the animals joining us. So everybody was asking, what is the relationship with the animals? Now, we do respect the animals, but unfortunately we remember them only once a year. When there is a festival of the cow, right? They were all part of our ecosystem. They were part of our ecosystem. We use them for ploughing, as Narsana and uh, Padma were showing it now. When we use a cattle plough, the soil comes out, comes up, and that aerates the soil. But when I use a heavy tractor, it makes compact. And when compaction of soil happens, the soil organism dies because soil air escapes. There is no enough soil air. And when this escapes, 
soil as is very important for any non chemical cultivation permaculture and things soil as is very important now if i have written soil as on the other way here in india we use a lot of chemicals lot of chemicals and usually we tamil nadu i come from tamil nadu we are number 3 the funny thing is punjab and andhra pradesh where you are staying now fight with each other to rank number 1 yeah sometimes it is the andhra is number 1 sometimes punjab is number 1 our production all governments in asia are claiming that our production is increasing but after 2000 when you take yield in tons per acre or per hectare has started decreasing this decreasing this is how my farmer takes pesticide this is how my farmer sprays without any protection and then all this pesticide goes in our drinking water and we have our drinking water contaminated with high levels of nitrates and pesticides fungal colonies microbial colonies are completely lost the name to get over here or all my phd students whenever i use their data i i i use the names over there this is what happened you can read it for yourself and we have added so much that our agriculture in india unfortunately has become agricultural This is what the Green Revolution promised me, and this is what the Green Revolution gave me. Just read it for yourself. Fine. Claude was with us when we went to Madanapalli, and this farmer, wonderful, wonderful farmer, he showed us his beautiful farm, lovely tomato farm, and all the margin plants are marigold. Marigold. Marigold is an excellent pest repellent. It is a pest. That's why I use them in temples. Wonderful. I complimented him that you have done a wonderful job of having marigold. He laughed at me and said, "Ada poosani." I said, "Why? What happened?" He said, "I grow them because there's a temple nearby and they give me lots of money." I asked him, "What do you do for tomato?" He uses endosulfan. So what's happening around? This is what is happening to his hands. Uh, all this corrosion is going into our stomach and now there is a habit of taking garbage and burning over there thinking that it is organic matter which goes into the soil and what burns over there is one thing dioxins are going into our soil so when you start looking at all these components what we eat is poison in the plate poison in the plate i am associated with the madras cancer institute we know how many children are going on suffering with all these things that today there is a train which goes every day from batinda in punjab to bikaner in rajasthan carrying not less than 100 passengers every day farmers who suffer with cancer and this train is called as you can google for cancer excel. you may google for cancer excel to get all the information people talk about soil fertility please as permaculture people stop talking about soil fertility fertility is related to fertilizer please talk about soil health soil health how healthy your soil is and when you take about trees this is what my trees give me a variety of materials it gives me and these trees they are able to communicate most recent research published in the nature indicates that a bigger grown tree can take care of a younger tree so when you find a big tree having more carbon and the smaller tree having no carbon is starving the big tree though they are connected with roots and mycelia of the fungi they can pass on information and send excess carbon from here to them and feed them and nourish them they are better than us right now in these trees can happen that's why probably in our culture we respect the trees and today politician looks at the trees this way i cut it how much money i get out of it when i cut the trees the rain comes the soil splashes and all this soil top soil is going into the sea ladies and gentlemen what is this madhu what is this earth what is this apple chips <laughs> for a moment shall we imagine apple to be the earth shall we yep okay Now what is this? 
what is this oh yes, very good good student now this i am cutting him into four pieces quick 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 that lady will start to yeah i am worried yeah, she is looking at what is she searching for What are you trying to show me? <laughs> Five minutes? No. Uh, you gave me the session only at 10:15. My session is till 11. I was given 45 minutes. I will take my 45 minutes. <laughs> I am very firm about it. I am a good teacher. I have made in my time. No. These are how many pieces, please? No. There's one in this hand. Three. Three is how much? How much percentage? 75 percent of the globe is roughly covered with water. Right? 25% is land now this land i'm going to cut into two this land i'm going to cut into two this way this way this way length wise one piece land not suitable for human inhabitation desert volcanoes polar regions land suitable for human inhabitation is only this much i am going to cut this into four cut one of them into four four bits in this four three suitable for human inhabitation but not suitable for agriculture 1 by 32 at an average of the entire globe alone is suitable for our inhabitation as well as for agriculture now i am going to remove only the peel from here i am remove only the peel from here and that peel thanks mother to be the and that peel this is what is top soil this is what is top soil ladies and gentlemen nature at an average takes 250 years to develop one inch of top soil the create you all please yeah ta yeah. now how can we save and protect this top soil you you have different diversified views you do what suits you best there are always a thumb rule for chemical farming there is no thumb rule for non chemical farming you are the scientist in your farm don't listen to anybody including me right we can only tell you what are the various methods we have practiced but you got to evolve and adopt what would suit best to you to develop your own farm whenever you find any litter lying down the brown material has more carbon the green material has more nitrogen you balance it you balance it you are the best judges and one of them is to do vermiculture vermitech when you talk about vermitech these are the earthworms and that's the clitellum and in earthworm please understand that the earthworm has three the whole world has three types of earthworm whole world three types even though there are 3500 species of earthworm india alone has more than 500 species of earthworm but based on the job they do there are surface worms subsurface worms and bottom living worms surface worms subsurface worms and bottom living worms and when i look at it these are the local varieties of worms in india and these are the earthworms that are used for composting purposes by most of the farmers here in india what does an earthworm do for me this is what an earthworm does watch it carefully the earthworm goes there's food over there it's going to eat it why is an earthworm important for the soil the mouth buccal cavity these are the gizzards which crush the food these are the heart the food enters into the stomach which is called as crop where digestion takes place goes into the intestine every segment has
has kidneys in them nephridia therefore nitrogen also is fine so carbon is going nitrogen is being added all mixed together comes out as vermic acid that is why earthworm is beneficiary for the soil when you look at it and then go these are the cocoons produced by the earthworm and please you multiply worms don't try to find out who is a male and who is a female worms have both the sexes in them so you are free from deciding right so don't enter into their private life no i must the cocoon to our release they start hatching out and this is how a young earthworm is born this is how a young earthworm is born If I want to grow worms, this is the life cycle of an earthworm. This is there in your PDF file, which will come to you. Grow, multiplying them is very simple, and they love cow dung cake. Just give a cow dung pat on them, and they start multiplying. Right? They eat this, and they produce wormy cobwebs. And where is fat available today on Amazon? Right? And they produce compost. That is vermi compost. That is vermi compost. Fine. Fine. I'll be a bit faster because uh, I have another 15 minutes. I got to wind up. Now, that is vermi compost. Why is compost important? Why is it necessary? Or what does it contain? I just rushed through. It has all sorts of microorganisms. All sorts of microorganisms. Sulfur bacteria, fungal colonies, and among fungal colonies, it also has very important trichoderma viridae in it. All the research has been completed. It also has algae. Among algae, it has anabaina, which is a nitrogen fixing agent. So we have all these varieties, and we have also tried biodynamic chromatography. And we are very happy to say that your local endemic earthworms are always far superior to any material which can produce vermi compost. So try to bring back your local worms into the soil. Don't try to produce compost and put it on. If you want to do composting, that's different. Please always look at this chap. He is a danger for your earthworm. He eats the earthworm. This is a tape worm. It's a planarian parasite. So in case you happen to see this tri-headed, triangular-headed fellow, be careful with him. Very slimy creature. Now, in case you have a dairy farm and you want to also have, or you have a cattle shed, the best way we did was for Krukshetra, but they had a lot of money. But we did it for a farmer. Just make two tanks like this. Just put up two tanks. Your cattle shed we wash every day at least twice a day. All the washing, little bit of dung, and the cow's urine, collect them in a sump. Please collect them in a sump, and then switch on the two motors. The one with the bigger pipe is the bore well water, that is the ground water. The one with the small one is the cattle shed water. This has all the cow's urine. They have everything. That's why you get foam in it, and the water comes out. We take 90% of that, 10% of this, and automatically the soil develops microorganisms. You don't need to do anything else. Simplify the whole thing. Please simplify the things, right? Now, one more thing. You are talking about trees. Somebody said trees for permaculture. Yeah. When 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 I walk in the rain, and if it rains, I hold the umbrella. Where does the water fall? On my head or around me? Around me. I don't have an umbrella. I stand under a big tree, which has huge foliage. I go and stand beneath it. A few drops may fall on my head, but mostly falls. Why should water fall, dear man? Is nature a fool? No. Nature is the most intelligent teacher. Water falls there because the roots we drink are there. Is it clear to all? The roots we drink and eat are there. So please, when you make something for your trees, make it at the canopy level, not at the trunk. You are feeding the tree at the wrong end. Is that clear? Fine. So please see to it that you make the trenches. Make the trenches. Provide enough nutrition and how much of water for a plant. Now supposing I ask for water, I ask her, sir, come on, give me some water, man. I want water to drink. What will he give water me? In a glass tumbler. If I tell him that I want to have a bath, he may give water in a bucket. If I tell him that I want to go and swim, he will show me a pond. How much of water are you giving for your tree? What is required is soil moisture, not soil water. Soil moisture. Please remember, soil moisture, not soil water. And how much of soil is required? I grow fenugreek in this beautiful small uh, sweet uh, basket which people give me. 
you can grow fenugreek. And how much of soil is required to grow means four inches. That is what is required. That is what is required. My student went further. She grows fenugreek in this coconut shell. Somebody said, what can I do for school children? Do this. One coconut shell, fenugreek, take it home as a spinach, cook and eat enough nutrients in it. So many things can be tried. I have started trying this for school children. They have toys along with this. I call them as mini parks. So they also water the plants and they play with the toys. Simple. Looks beautiful. Right? Start doing. You, you go ahead with your imagination. Go ahead with your imagination. Earthworms work. Earthworms work mainly in the night. And they make a lot of holes one in the night. And this we made use of to create this vermi wash. This was the first drum I created in 1982. It costed me 200 rupees. Farmer said expensive, 50 rupees. One farmer said expensive, 10 rupees. It is not the container, it is the content which is important. Right? Please be very clear, there is a lot of difference between vermi wash and vermi leachate. Many people just take compost, put it in water and call it as vermi wash. It is not vermi wash, it is vermi leachate. All the experiments have been done, this data is also available to the PDF file for you. What are the advantages, disadvantages, everything has been worked out. And this sweet little girl from a government school makes them in plastic bottles and is gifting it to farmers. Don't you think that is from our culture? Yeah. Good. Panjakave has one more important thing which Vandana was talking about. Five things from the cow. These are the compositions. Everything is available on my website. You can download everything for free. Everything for free. All the work which I have done is for public for free. We have done a lot of experiments. I was heading the Department of Biotechnology. Right? We have done a lot of experiments at the grassroots level to find out what happens when you combine this, what happens to the xylem vessels in the plant, what happens to the chromosomes of the plant, and what is the molecular structure of this compound. And we have excellent materials in these things. We don't require any chemical composition to equal it. All molecular structures have been worked out. All the details are available. EM is being sold. And a good job of a good permaculturist or a person working with non-chemicals is not to pull a farmer from a chemical shop and send him to an organic shop, but to make the farmer independent. No EM. Make farmer's EM. You make it. You can ferment it. You can prepare from goat. You can prepare from fish. You do whatever you want from eggs. And this is something wonderful. Take eggshells. Today we eat omelets. There are so many omelet shops around. Just roast the shells for a few while till the inner membrane is dried out, take a glass bottle, put them inside, add vinegar into it. Vinegar is acetic acid, this is calcium, bubbling takes place, bubbling suspends in about one or two days. The solution has all the elements you require for your plant. Dilute it, spray it. Go ahead, go ahead, do it. Use Diyavamut, who is interested, go ahead, use it. This we have worked out very well for seed preservation, or by planting to protect seeds, use termite soil. Termite soil has the property. Mix it with cow dung and urine. Protects us a lot. I asked one of my farmers to use this gunny sack. He said, your idea is useless. He said, this dabba is better. That is his idea. That is his idea. That is his idea. You can convert any material into compost, any biomass into compost. And for this, you require my... No, I will exactly stop at 11, even if it is incomplete. I, I have been given 45 minutes. No. Ask him. Sir, you have given me 45 minutes. You have given me 45 minutes for my lecture. I will take 45 minutes. Stop it. Okay? 11 o'clock. Yes. Correct. Bad teacher. I can't help it. I was grown up in a school where one minute late was called as late. So I was told 45 minutes. I, stopped. I have a buzzer here which tells me I have to stop at 45 minutes. You have to use microorganisms, take cow dung, dissolve it in water, add it up. Right? This is what we do. Create them and the whole pile is ready. If there is temperature, this is very important. In a regular compost, western machines have come out now. In 24 hours compost, you can't deliver a baby in 24 hours. It takes 10 months. Right? Compost takes time. It has to go through two phases of temperature fluctuation. This temperature is important because it destroys microorganisms, it destroys pests, it destroys unwanted seeds. And then you turn over, the heat is gone, it comes down, cool it, give it to the worms, the worms eat it and the compost is ready. That's all. You do whatever design you want. I'll just rush through, I will not go through these things. 
These are all various models. They are available on my website. You can just pick them. You choose your bin. You choose whichever bin you want, whichever way you want to recycle. This is which one which we have developed ourselves, which the Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board now uses for everybody. Compost and then do vermicomposting. Doing it for the government. Just have a look at the slides. I have about five, seven minutes left. Just have a look at the slides. Compost, that's vermicompost. Water is important. Please resort to participatory rural appraisals. Don't trust government plans. Do a PRA, understand a PRA, find out what happens in the village, design the PRA, and then work it out. It works out. Punjab needs water. Punjab needs water. So you can understand what is happening. We just take up water and complete groundwater is being lost. So let us reworm the world. Let us reworm the world because without the worm, when rains come, the water goes slowly, trickles, doesn't reach the water table. When worms are there, they make burrows, and through these burrows, rainwater can reach down. So please welcome the worms back. Who is the greatest scientist on the farm? No, that is one professor. He is Professor Goat. Please remember all the international participants. A goat can eat all sorts of plants. The plants which a goat does not eat has pest repellent properties in them. You take a goat with you for a walk. If the goat eats, leave it. If the goat says, ooh, -hoo, you take it. Sit, crush it, ferment it, excellent pest repellent. That's all. You don't need anything else. Select such five plants. Select five plants. Make a decoction. Make a decoction of it. And then you just spray it. Your, your broad-based pest repellent is ready. All these friends start coming, including James Bond. Right? And all, all these experiments have been done. Lots of uh, material from the kitchen can be used as pest repellent. Uh, it maintains pH, it maintains NPK, it produces organic carbon. And please, 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 in a permaculture situation, if you are just going around, if you want to know if your soil is good or bad, look at the cow dung. If the cow dung dries like a pad, there are no microorganisms and no moisture in the soil. If your cow dung breaks into small granules, that means the soil is good enough, has enough moisture and enough microorganisms. You don't require a scientist to come and certify your farm. Right? Seeds. If you eat a custard apple, you can count the number of seeds in it. Right? But can you guess how many fruits will you produce by each seed? No. That is the importance of seeds. That is nature. And this they want to patent and call it a company. And we are moving from seed politics, from biodiversity to genetic slavery. We don't need the seeds because for us, food is medicine. For us, food is medicine. Brinjal was a problem. You can discuss about this. There's, uh, Pradeep is available here, who grows all these states of Brinjal in Tamil Nadu. <laughs> Mustard, they want to produce. They want to fool people in the name of hybrid. Whereas it is a hybrid from a genetically modified parent. It's a hybrid from a genetically modified plant. So what will happen? Biodiversity will create all the sounds and biotechnology will fine. So please don't quarrel among yourselves. I am permaculture, I am biodynamic, I am sustainable, I am natural, I am organic. We are all working towards non-chemical, non-poisonous farming. That's all. Right? We are all working towards it. Let us unite. Let us work from crop-centric to farmer-centric agriculture. Let us work from farmer-centric agriculture. One basic habit, because there are still three minutes left for me. In this three minutes, please remember our national flag when you go back. This is my national flag. What is the first color? Saffron or orange. Please see to it that you take some food of that color every day. Either carrot or a mango or a pumpkin or an orange or whatever it is. It has carotene pigment, which is very good for us. We don't require golden rice. The second color is white. Today, calcium deficiency has come up. Osteoporosis has come, come up. If you are not a vegan, take milk, otherwise take a calcium substitute. Green, take green colored vegetables. Green colored. All these Indians have moved over to paneer. Come back to green. It has all the fiber that is required for the body. Blue colored circle, blue is for water we use. Take enough amount of water, dehydrated. And how many lines in the circle? 24 hours, follow my national flag. You don't require any food from any part of the world. That's my national flag says, right? Right? Be, be careful, be careful with this bow and growth hormones. 
even mango leaves are sudden. This one thing alone I would like to share with you. When it rains, whom does this water belong to? When it rains on the soil, whom does this water belong to? Soil. If you leave a pot over there and you collect water in the pot, now that pot water belongs to whom? To the person who has the pot, right? But I gave you that pot. Now whom does it belong to? I give you only the pot, not the water. But you have no other pot. This is what multinational companies are trying to do. My farmer, his work, his farm. They would like to throw a few seeds and say, everything belongs to me. Please start thinking. Please start thinking. That was the greatest reward of my research, which came in the textbook. The term vermitech for the world was coined by me. That was the term which I had coined for the world. And that was the best thing which happened when there was a question from the government question paper, who coined the term Sultan Ismail or MS Swaminathan? And those who ticked for him lost the mark. Anyway, so please be creative. This is creativity. He is using that. And she doesn't like it, crack it. Should he cry? No, convert it to the supply and use it. That is creativity, right? Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it, please. I'll just move on. Yeah. I should, now I should not talk. Yeah, go ahead with global warming. And that's our idea. And this doesn't require a training, it just requires effort. Put in some effort, but have patience. Today, even if you walk quietly, there is somebody to put you down. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful about it. There is a book available for children. There are 100 experiments in it. The book is not available. It's online. Everything is for free download. 100 science experiments. Use it for yourself. I was able to work with a uh, former president over there. So it was a wonderful job to do. No pen drive. Everything will be online. Thank you. Good luck. All the best. Loving stuff. See, Narsana is so wise, he does it after I complete. Had he kept it before, I would have used 60 minutes. Yeah, always Sultan be on time. You know what is Sultan? Really is king. Sultan is king. King, king of what? Pulling crowds. Wherever he is, the children, from children to adults and old people. Just now I went to the kitchen. So, which class is going on, sir? So, some Sultan is mine. You did big mistake. Actually, I was supposed to be there. He all the way come from city. Is our caterer. Eight marriages are going in Hyderabad. Biggest marriages. He gave up nicely and he came here to attend this Sultan Ismail session. That is Sultan Ismail. So, thank you so much, Sultanji, once again. I think this is last hour friendship. Next time I am not inviting any of us. <laughs> thank you so much.